We'll be covering the scoundrel ruffian and operative lethality in version 7.2 of uh, Star Wars Online. The main rotation is going to be using the following uh, abilities from the scoundrel ruffian, vital shot, trap bomb, singendary shot, bushwhack, blaster whip, point blank shot, and brutal shots. On the operative side, those same abilities are Corrosive Dart, Corrosive Grenade, Toxic Blast, Toxic Haze, Shiv, Lethality Strike, Corrosive Assault. The single target rotation is going to be using the Cynic Shot Tactical, and it's going to go with Vital Shot, Strap Bomb, Blaster Whip, Singendary Shot, Point Blank Shot, Brutal Shot three times, Blaster Whip, Brutal Shot. On the operative side, it's Corrosive Dart, Corrosive Grenade, Shiv, Toxic Blast, Lethal, lethal Strike, corrosive, dart, uh, corrosive Assault three times, Shiv, and then another Corrosive Shot, and then Repeat. If you're doing AoE or multiple target rotation, you're going to pick the strongest target in the bunch, and you're going to use the Viral Elements Tactical. It's going to go Vital Shot, Shrap Bomb, Singendary Shot, Bushwhack, Blaster Whip, Point Blank Shot, Two Brutal Shots, Blaster Whip, Brutal Shot, and on the operative lethality side, it's Corrosive Dart, Corrosive Grenade, Toxic Blast, Toxic Haze, Shiv, Lethal Strike, Corrosive Assault two times, and then Shiv, and then Gross Out of Assault, and then back to the start. Now, there's a little a special situation in multiple target rotation. Your Shrap Bomb is actually a debuff on all the targets that it hits. So sometimes you want everything to bunch up. And because of that, you might want to do a little bit of a switch. Get to your strong target really fast, and then start with Vital Shot, and then you're going to sw swap Shrap Bomb and Blaster Whip. So you're going to go Vital Shot, Blaster Whip, Singendary Shot, Bushwhack, Shrap Bomb, Point Blank Shot, Brutal Shot, Brutal Shot, Blaster Whip, Brutal Shot. And this gives you enough time for everything to bunch up, so that when Shrap Bomb goes out later in the rotation, it puts the debuff on everything that it hits. The ability tree is going to look something like follows, and we'll go through it in a little bit more detail later on. You've got two tacticals that you're going to be using, Cynic Shot for single target, Viral Elements for multiple targets. Your implants are locked and loaded package, and the tactician package. Let's go into the game and have a look at what it looks like there. Here in the game. So the nice rotation here is that we're going to start with Vital Shot and Shrap Bomb. We're on the Republic side. And the nice thing is we can uh, run in as we activate these. There's no need to use Trick Move and Scamper uh, to get close to your target in the initial opening. Um, you've got these two range abilities and you can run in as you activate them. It gives you a little bit more timing to start at a range as you get in. And depending on how far away from your target you are, you can already start this up. So what I would usually do is uh let's start with vital shot strap on blaster whip singendary shot point blank shot three brutal shots one two three blaster whip brutal shot and then start over strap on blaster whip singendary shot point blank shot three brutal shots blaster whip Brutal shot. Okay, let's talk about the sequence. And we have two dots of the start, trap bomb and vital shot. Then singendary shot works kind of like a dot. It does a weapon damage whenever one of your dots tick. And um, it has a time frame uh, for 10 seconds. Our main dots have a 24 second uh, time frame and the amount of damage that they do off the start is not the critical thing. Um, then by themselves, they don't do that much, but whenever they tick, Singenary Shot will tick as well and that's what adds that additional flavor to it. Blaster Whip is our, uh, is our stack to gain upper hand, so we want it in there because we use upper hands to activate Brutal Shots. And then point blank shot has a, um, a damage that it does. One of, part of it is um, internal damage, 
and another part of it is actually kinetic damage. The internal damage works like a bleed, meaning that when that goes off, our singonary shot ticks as well. And so we can see this. If we just do that, that's yellow damage. And we'll wait for it to come back, and then we'll put singonary shot on. Singonary shot, point black shot. See, there's that little white damage. And when we combine everything together, that will stack up even more. And then Brutal Shot does minimal damage, um, but it ticks multiple times. So, so in the game, it doesn't always show, but um, some damages are just stacked together on the screen, especially if they're the same type. But there's actually multiple ticks there. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so our brutal shot will also tick our bleed damage in addition to everything else. So if we put a vital shot, shrap on, sink another shot, and we do a brutal shot, look at all of those ticks happening. So all of the uh, bleed effects tick and that causing another shot to stack up. Let's have a look quickly at our tactical a little bit. Singonary Shot does 75% more damage. Whenever Singonary Shot critically hits, it restores two energy. So without that tactical, we have an energy problem, but with that tactical, we have no energy problem. So whenever it, it ticks, it, it helps us out. The other thing to consider is um, we work on upper hands, keeping this Brutal Shot alive. And the timing is such that if we go through our sequence, you'll notice that we put Singonary Shot on last before we go to our dot ticking abilities, which is point blank shot and then brutal shots. And the reason for that is that we want this 10 second time gap that we have is to keep the stack on the boss alive while we go through it. So watch, I'm just going to put the dots on and then Watch for this singular buff, that one right there. And we're going to, we'll keep an eye on this singular shot one here the next time I start the rotation. And when we're done with the rotation, you'll see it's just about to fall off. And that's why the rotation puts this on last. So. There it goes on. One, two, three brutal shots. Last the whip, fourth, and it's about to fall off. And there it fell off. And that's what our timing is all about. Now, there is a scenario where we don't get three brutal shots, a blast whip, and a single brutal shot. The sequence is dependent on us gaining upper hands. And if we look at our ability tree, um, So, Blaster Whip triggers unfair advantage, which makes your next Brutal Shot re, uh, grant upper hand and cost no energy. This effect can uh, not occur more than once every 10 seconds. And that is what gives us that third Brutal Shot in the sequence. So there's our Blaster Whip. So, if you watch, we've got two upper hands. One, and we gain a second one, another one back. Two three blaster whip but if you notice this we have two blaster whips in the rotation and sometimes it's the second blaster whip that becomes the one that activates it don't worry about it if that happens to you you're just going to do two blast uh, brutal shots blaster whip two brutal shots the timing is still such that your singular shot is there it's not something to be concerned about you're still doing the same amount of damage it's just a which a, a blaster whip is activating that extra upper hand. Okay, let's have a look at some uh, ability tree items. Um, so brutal shots, we're going to pick on line 23, penetrating strategies. Increases the armor penetration, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage of brutal shots by 10%. On line 27, sly surrender. It increases the... Um, 
duration of dodge by two seconds. While dodge is active, the damage you take from area effects is reduced by 60%. So uh, dirty kick is a stun. We really don't uh, need a stun that often. Um, I find that this uh, dodge is way more uh, effective in its utility and increasing its duration by two seconds um, really makes it a very, very effective ability. And I'll demonstrate some of its uses. Um, line 39, we're going to do Shrap Bomb increases the critical hit chance of your periodic bleed effects to targets that are affected by 20%. And that's why we want Shrap Bomb to hit everything that we're going to be bleeding on. Um, you can uh, do the energy um, option here. It really is not necessary with all of the tacticals that we use. Shrap Bomb deals 10% more critical hit damage, grants two damage reductions per targeted hits for 10 seconds. We're a bleed um, ability uh, user. Um, that initial hit from Shrap Bomb to grease it in by 10%, it's only in our rotation once. It really doesn't benefit that. Um, but that 2% damage reduction per targeted hits is a useful utility. So let me switch that and demonstrate what that does. <clears throat> See, there's one stack. And if we were hitting, dealing with a lot of enemies, we can keep that up by using our Shrap Bomb and we can go up to eight stacks. So that's a 2% uh, percent damage reduction times eight. That's 16% damage reduction. That is, can be very significant, so it's very situational. You'll do less damage, but if you need to do that uh, to keep alive or reduce the amount of damage you take, it is something that is quite useful. Keep in mind it has a 10 second cooldown. Your rotation is about 16 seconds. Um, well, sorry, your rotation is about 14 seconds. So you're going to have to weave that in more often if you want to uh, keep this whole setup, setup alive. On line 43, leverage off offense. Having an upper hand increases your critical hit chance and all damage and healing dealt by 5%. Uh, we are going to have a look at this um, in a bit. What happens to our critical hit chance? Scar tissue increased damage reduction by 5%. Line 64, med screen, your defense screen heals you for 5% when your maximum health, when it collapses. Uh, there's something to be known about that, and I'll cover that. The other one is keep uh, cool head now immediately restores 15 additional energy. We really don't have an energy problem, um, so that's not necessary. When activating disappearing actrons, two seconds of dodge. We don't we can always use our dodge in conjunction with disappearing act to deal with that and disappearing act is not as powerful as it used to be it doesn't remove us from combat um so that dodge was intended to be an ability that uh, that would cleanse us and get us out of a, a damage over time effect um, so that we don't get pulled back into combat when we use Disappearing Act. That was the initial benefit of this ability, and it no longer has that effect. We cannot leave um, combat uh, while we are in, in an instance by using Disappearing Act. Line 68, uh, I like to use Trick Move. It's quite nice to be able to jump around. Um, it increases your movement ability for uh, 3 seconds by 75%. Here, I do also look at Flash Grenade. Um, so, it lobs a grenade um, that b blinds the targets for seven, uh, up to, what's it, up to seven nearby enemies for eight seconds. So, it works like an AoE stun, but that's not the real benefit from it. Um, when Flash Grenade ends, it leaves behind a Flash Powder that reduces the target's accuracy by 20% for 8 seconds. And that is the real, real benefit. That uh, accuracy, the reduction for 20, uh, 
100% for 8 seconds. Your dodge has a, a 200% defense chance increase. Um, dodge melee attack. And so if you combine these two, you're almost guaranteed to survive almost any hit. Um, because you're reducing the accuracy of targets. And sometimes if it's not a boss, that works all by itself. Um, now... We don't have that ability on the training dummy, but I was wanted to show you is that has a real, real benefit um, to um, to groups of uh, mobs that you deal with. You can lop that out there, and even if it doesn't stun them, it immediately triggers the powder. And um, that is really handy to just survive for you know, those eight seconds uh, where that accuracy is there and we can weave some of these other abilities in as well. Okay. Um, smuggle. Smuggle used to be handy. It's so situational where you can smuggle a group um, in stealth, but nobody uses it anymore. Um, I've hardly seen it used these days. Um, it's sometimes just easier to clear the mobs. It's not as a powerful stealth as you might assume. The players that are in your smuggle group uh, have to be very careful with the proximity to um, to other uh, groups. Line 73, scramble. Um, every time you get attacked, the active cooldown of your dodge is reduced by 3 seconds. This effect cannot occur more than 1.5 seconds. Um, this is incredibly handy. Uh, the other option is back at you, activating dodge grants back at you, returning 150% of direct single target tech and force damage attack back to the attacker. So, um, the other one I'll just quickly say, when used from stealth, uh, back blast and point blank shot interrupts and knocks down the target for 3 seconds. Player targets are immobilized for 3 seconds rather than being knocked down. This doesn't work against... Um, champion targets they have immunity to it so really when you need it it it's it's not useful and the weaker targets you really don't have to worry about these class this class can destroy any weak uh, entities so not a very useful option here uh, back at you you just have to consider that you actually have to take this damage it's not a reflect it doesn't cause you to avoid the damage. It just pushes that returning damage back at the target at 150%. So yes, it hurts them more than it hurts you. But you have to take that damage. And if you're expecting to take a big hit, um, keep in mind in certain boss fights when there is something like a big hit that you might want to return the damage, they are immune to the return damage at that point. So those considerations have to be taken as well. It is nice, it's really handy in PvP, but I almost always feel Scramble to be way more effective. So let's look at why that is. So dodge is a one minute cooldown. If we actively are receiving damage, whether it's just an AoE damage or anything like that, dodge will get cooldown down to 30 seconds. We have defense screen, that is a 30 second cooldown. And what we need to know about the faint screen is that um, we picked the med screen. Your defense screen heals you for 5% of your maximum health when it collapses. So let's just activate that. So there's the faint screen. It lasts for about 10 seconds. And during that 10 seconds, it will absorb 33,000 damage. And as soon as it's off, it adds another 20,000 heal. And it's based off of your hit points. So the higher your hit points, the more that heal is. By the way, that heal will never crit. It's a fixed heal off of your percentage. So, but if we look at this ability, it, it's actually stronger than what it appears. If we use it when a big hit is about to come in, it'll absorb that 30,000 hit point and give us a 20,000 heal. So that looks more like a 50,000 damage avoidance. 
and that's what makes this ability so useful and you have it every 30 seconds there's another feature right about it it uh, um, in addition you always take 30 percent reduced damage from periodic effects and your damage reduction is increased for 50 by 15 percent for six seconds after defense screens ends so if defense screen ends you for six seconds and we'll watch the buff comes here you have a 15 percent damage reduction so defense screen is like a preemptive um there it is damage reduction 15 percent and it is very very powerful because of that we can preemptively activate it as we know the damage is about to come in we can eat that damage and effectively nullify 50,000 uh, of that hit points and then we had additionally on that to receive a damage reduction right afterwards so if we keep getting damage after that we get that damage reduction and so it's a really really effective uh, ability the next one we want to look at is pugnacity so pugnacity um, it seems like an offensive ability um, but it does a little bit more so it restores 10 percent energy we don't really have an energy problem and the few times that we do we can deal with it but it boosts our alacrity by 10 percent for 15 seconds which effectively if we have enough alacrity it can push us into the next global cool uh cool down uh, time frame and we can go really fast so that could be a dps increase but the other ability that it has is that as a surprise comeback which restores five percent of our total health every three seconds and reduces the damage received by 20 percent so a damage reduction and if we think about it it's every three seconds for 15 seconds that's five times that it will tick uh, at five percent so this is a 25 percent hit point recovery we're sitting at over 400,000 right now that is a hundred thousand heal right there with a 20 percent damage reduction really really high effective ability we always want to keep a a shield adrenal of available because it absorbs 30 percent uh, of the damage up to 8 80, 84,000 in this case for 15 seconds so what this means is that if we was received a 280,000 um, damage uh, over 15 seconds whether that's a single hit or multiple hits 80,000 of that 280,000 will be absorbed so 30 percent of that now let's think about that a little bit further what we have and so let's expand to some of the other abilities so if i scamper as a ruffian or lethality i have a colter pack and i can activate that well i just crit it for 40 almost forty thousand, and i can do that every eight seconds without using an upper hand so every eight seconds I can scamper and I get a free Colter pack. Okay. So next is slow release med pack. This is our next heal. So one stack of slow release med pack is 18,500. And it's done over 18 seconds. So you can see there credit for 5,000. 3,000, it's just normal tick okay so that's one stack if we put a second stack on it's now doubled up this is now turned into almost the forty thousand heals without critting when it crits it looks more like fifty thousand heals so this is something we can keep alive on us the whole time we're fighting and it's not something that i recommend all the time but if you're sitting in a situation where you're constantly receiving damage incoming um, you can keep this alive you can roll periodically give yourself a cult pack, and just keep this ability alive if you need to in addition we have a hundred thousand so let's add this up we have med a defense screen we have twenty thousand there we have we can almost bank on a forty thousand cult pack another 40,000 slow release med pack 
So now we're sitting at 100,000 just from these three abilities, slow release, med pack, defense screen, and call to pack. We know we can get another 100,000 from pugnacity. So if we combine all of these with our shield adrenal, not including the damage reduction that these other abilities can give us, we can be at a zero uh, hit point loss. And this is a really, really handy technique to think about it, that you can take yourself back to full health if you need to. Um, you can't do it all the time, but your pugnacity is on a one minute and 20 second cooldown. So you can do it quite frequently. Um, this is what makes this a class really, really powerful. If we did the training monitor and healing dummy, I've been able to sustain about a 9,000 heals per second um, using this mechanics. You can probably do a little bit more if you're more um, in tune to it. And this is without using a med pack. Okay. Let's see what we can really do if we look at just doing DPS. I'm not going to use Pugnacity in this rotation just now. I'll explain Pugnacity's um, possible utility in this. We're up at 30,000. It looks like we can do 29.5, at least around 29,000 DPS. Okay. Okay, 29.5. Bugnacity, defense screen, and dodge instant cast abilities. If you, if I activate a, a normal ability, you'll see this white curtain going over and that means those abilities cannot be activated until that curtain comes down. If you notice, dodge, defense screen, pugnacity don't have it. That means at any one point during our activation of um, rotation, these abilities can be activated without the penalty on the, uh, on the global cooldown. That is really, really powerful. And this goes for stack the deck as well. So when somebody calls for, um, you know, raid buffs, you can hit your pugnacity to get that free upper hand. Make sure you don't have two already. And then you stack the deck. So sometimes you have to keep an eye on, like, how many upper hands do I have? Maybe do a brutal shot or two, and then use your pugnacity, stack the deck, as you see the brutal shots are not available anymore just to make sure and then keep going with your rotation. But if you're fast enough, you can do it in the middle of your rotation and give that raid buff without any pause in your sequence. Dodge has some unique abilities. We know that it is a damage reduction for AOE attacks at 60%. And if you're very planful of that, that's really good time to use it. But the other feature that Dodge has is that it's a 200% defense chance um, against dodge, uh, you know, to dodge melee and range attacks. This is very situational, but we can combine it to make it really, really powerful. So dodge in this configuration on the ruffian is for seven seconds with that utility that we have. And the other thing we need to know about a scamper has another 30%. So if we do a dodge and a scamper, we have 230% damage uh, defense chance. That is really handy to understand. That combination of these two abilities is what gets us to be safe around a boss. Uh, because of this combination, we can avoid certain damages from bosses that are direct damage attacks. 
we'll have to time it very carefully. We can do it only once every 30 seconds, but we can do it on both scampers. It's not as good as the scrapper uh, scamper, but it, it's really, really close. And so we need to understand that bosses have a really high accuracy against the fence chance. And those two are evaluated. Your accuracy versus the fence chance is always evaluated. Mobs are fairly low. For mobs and low level character uh, enemies, you could use a dodge and they won't be able to touch you. Um, against the PvP player, those single target attacks are not going to land because 200% trumps 110% accuracy every day. But for a boss, they are right up around 200%. But if you use dodge plus scamper, you'll be able to avoid those attacks. And that can be really, really handy to, to know about. So just to explain what dodge's is, uh, effectiveness is, there's another feature around dodge. It is a cleanse, a tech cleanse. And you have um, triage that create, uh, removes two negative tech or physical effects. So that's your main cleanse. But dodge works like a cleanse as well. And you really have two cleanses. You have one that has a 10.7 seconds cooldown. And then you have one that is on a, a effectively if you being attacked on a 30 second cooldown. And it cleanses things to ridiculous levels. Um, it doesn't just cleanse one stack or two stacks um, as triage does. It'll cleanse everything, which can get you in a lot of trouble if you want to keep up your stack. So be very aware of this effect from dodge but it is really really powerful um, when used right in such a way that you can solo many many bosses because you can cleanse everything off of your tree that can be cleansable um, immediately as soon as you activate this so let's look at a we damage um, using the viral elements tactical Viral elements, bushwhack spreads singularity shots effect and point blank shot does additional damage to all nearby targets affected by bushwhack. So, if we have singularity shot on a target and we activate bushwhack, that target will spread every um, to every uh, enemy in the bushwhack being damaged by bushwhack. Then, if we look at ability tree bushwhack spreads your vital shot to the target's damage as long as it damages at least one target already affected by by your vital shot so your vital shot gets spread by bushwhack shrap bomb is an aoe so when it hits up to eight targets and then so we can put all three of our dots vital shot shrap bomb singularity shot all onto a target by uh, all the targets with bush whack then going back to our um, tactical blank point blank shot does additional damage to all nearby targets affected to bushwhack so it ticks its internal damage to all of the targets around it that are affected by bushwhack so now we need to put this together so our rotation goes vital shot Shrap bomb, singularity shot, bushwhack. Keep in mind, we were first blasted whip, then singularity shot on single target rotation. And the reason why we did that is we wanted to have singularity shot as close to our dot ticking abilities, which is point blank shot and shrap and um, brutal shots. We're now going to reverse this a little bit. We're going to put all of our dots on, including singularity shot. Then we're going to do bushwhack. We don't immediately go to point blank shot. We go to blast blaster whip. And the reason for that is we need bushwhack to tick its damage to spread the dots. It says so very clearly. Bushwhack spreads your vital shot to the targets. It damages as long as the damage at least one target is already affected by a vital shot. It needs to tick a damage. And a lot of people make this mistake of immediately going to point blank shot and then you don't get that point blank shot to all of the targets because not all of the targets have the vital shot yet so vital shots shrap bomb singularity shot bushwhack blaster whip point blank shot and then we do two brutal shots 
and then a blaster whip, single brutal shot. So you'll notice we lost one brutal shot. We gave that upper hand away for bushwhack, and that's fine. You'll see that our singonary shot will fall off by this time on that last or that third brutal shot uh, in the rotation. So let's go through this. Vital shot, shrap bomb, singonary shot, bushwhack, blast the weapon. Hear this gunshot. One brutal shot, two brutal shot, blast the whip, brutal shot. That's our AoE rotation. We have a little bit of a nuance that we can play with. Trap bomb is not being spread by bushwhack. It doesn't have to be here in the rotation. Um, we can flip it a little bit around. The only advantage of why it would be here in the rotation is look at what range we can activate it in. We can be running in without having to do anything and we can already start our rotation. We can do vital shot, shrap bomb, look at that, singularity shot, bushwhack, blaster whip, point blank shot, brutal shots, brutal shot, blaster whip, brutal shot. The only reason why I have it here in the rotation is because of this range effect. But if we flip shrap bomb and blaster whip around, we have the same effect. And there is a reason for why we might want to do this in AoE. And the only reason why is that if we see a mob that isn't all tight together, we want to put Shrap Bomb onto all of those targets. Keep in mind, Shrap Bomb, this ability, Shrap Bomb increases the critical hit chance of your periodic bleed effects, the target effect, that by 20%. That is a big thing, and we want that on all of the targets. So, if we start with Vital Shot, Blaster Whip, Singinary Shot, Bushwhack, then Trap Bomb as they all together. Brutal Shots, Brutal Shot, Blaster Whip, Brutal Shot. So, our timing was there that we got a, a upper hand a little bit earlier, and you would just finish off your Brutal Shots. Don't worry about it. As an opener, you might want to do that sequence. So let me flip these abilities back. Let me show you what this looks like. So, Viral Shot. Blaster Whip. Singinary Shot. Bushwhack. That spacing that I need. Blast. Point Black Shot. Brutal Shot. Brutal Shot. Blaster Whip. Brutal Shot. Brutal Shot. Okay, so what's going on? I need an ability between Bushwhack and Point Blank Shot. It can be any ability. The only reason why I need that is I need that Bushwhack to tick once before I do Point Blank Shot. And Blaster Whip, the only reason why we're doing Blaster Whip for now, and I'll explain some other features about Blaster Whip, is to gain an upper hand. And I need the Shrap Bomb to go out on as many targets as I can. So as an opener, you might want to flip this around. Nice big hit. Okay. So let's look at something else that Blaster Whip does. And this is really nice. And it happens to to be the case in single target and AOE a target attack. Blaster Whip has this critical ta critical tactics. I'm going to open up my ability tree. I'm just waiting for it to fall off. Okay. Okay. Mm, let me wait for these stats to return to normal. Okay, so let's look at this critical. I start with 35% critical hit chance. Multiplier is at 64. If I do a blaster whip, I'm up at 50. If I activate my other abilities, so me spending an upper hand um, increases it every 10 seconds it gives me another increase so i can go up 
and I can maintain this, I have Blaster Whip twice in my rotation, so my critical hit chance is always up above 50%. As I'm spending um, my upper, as I gain upper hands, I'll gain another 5% in there. There's some other stacks in the uh, tree as well. So I'm constantly getting up above 50% and staying up above 50%. Um, so, and one of them comes from leverage offense. Having an upper hand increases your critical hit chance and all damage and healing dealt by 5%. Keep that in mind that that all applies to slow release med pack as well. So if I was to keep these up there, 50% of my heals are going to be critting. Just wanted to point that out there. We've covered the single target and the AOE target damage. Let's go back to single target. And let me just show you. We were up at 30%, uh, 30,000 hit points. What if we needed to keep slow release med pack on us? What would our rotation look like then? So I'm going to, there's the slow release med pack, two of them, and I'm going to start my rotation. Master whip. Singenary shot, point beam shot, brutal shot one, two, three, blaster whip, brutal shot, and now a slow release mid pack just once I can refresh it. Just want to see how much DPS I'm losing out of this. Slow release mid pack once. Clear that I'm healing for 4,000 heals per second. Doing this, I'm losing about as much DPS as I'm healing. So it's a one to one exchange for however many heals I'm doing per second. I'm losing that much DPS, maybe a little bit more heals. I'm losing DPS. Okay. So these numbers are right about there. Just wanted to point that out because 26,000 DPS might be sufficient enough for whatever task you're doing and you might just need those heals on the back end. And if you see that you're taking 4,000 or 3,000 damage per second, this little flip in the rotation, just adding in that slow release med pack might be sufficient to keep you alive. Um, this might be in situations where you don't have a companion or your companion can't keep up. Um, you have a lot of other heals. Keep in mind that Pugnacity is an instant cast um, and so is the fan screen. Okay, let's look at the Imperial side next. So on the Imperial side, we have Corrosive Dart, Corrosive Grenade, a Toxic Blast is our Singenary Shot, Shiv is our Blaster Whip, Point Blank Shot is now a Lethal Strike, Gross of Assault is the uh, point as the last the dot sticker there. So our normal single target rotation would be Gross of Dart, Gross of Grenade, Shove, Toxic Blast, Lethal Strike, one Gross of Assault, two, three, Shove, Gross of Assault. Back to Gross of Dart, Gross of Grenade, Shove, Toxic Blast. Lethal strike. One corrosive salt. Two, three, shove. Corrosive assault. Okay, so that's our single target rotation. Our AOE rotation here. It's the same. It's corrosive start. Corrosive assault. Toxic blast. Toxic haze. Shove. Lethal strike. Corrosive assault. Shove, corrosive assault. Okay, so that again, corrosive dart, corrosive grenade, toxic blast, toxic haze, shove, lethal strike, corrosive assault once, twice, shove, corrosive assault. 
instead of defense, uh, we now have a shield probe. Our dodge became evasion. Pugnacity became stim boost. Um, our tactical superiority is our raid um, buff. Uh, toxin scan is our personal cleanse. I interrupt this distraction. Um, then scamper is exfiltrate now. We do go, we have a flashbang instead of flash grenade. Uh, hollow traverse is our trick move. Okay. And your Colto probe is our um, slow release med pack. Colto infusion is our Colto pack. So we can activate that. Every eight seconds we can uh, exfiltrate and get a Colto infusion. So let's go back to single target and have a look at how much DPS we can actually get. One, two, three. Okay, so 30.5 right about there. It's not really that different from the uh, Republic side. Um, parsing this several times over, I know that the, the randomness in the game is such that we can swing easily by 500 to 800 um, DPS points. So about exactly the same really. Um, um, sometimes we can really get down up to 30,000, sometimes 29,000, but that's uh, something you can bank on um, if you really are specced out for it. You already have a nice feature that you can do most of your abilities. I'm standing here at 6.5 meters, and the only thing that isn't at that range is Shiv and, point and Lethal Strike. So if you can step in, get those two abilities off, you can step back and do your corrosive dart, and that can be really handy in fights where there's a proximity problem around the boss. You just step in real quick, lethal strike, corrosive dart. Keep in mind this is a great time to use a shield probe if there's damage around the boss. You can activate it in your rotation. So for example, if we were to do corrosive dart, step in. And step back out so in that time my defense screen or shield probe could have protected me as i stepped in and stepped back out again and so be and you can do that every 30 seconds um so you can use your def your shield probe or defense screen uh, to protect yourself as you step into close to the boss where there might be damage um, if it's an aoe damage evasion is great for that um, it, it's perfectly situated to, to deal with that situation. I hope you find that helpful in playing your operative or scoundrel. Have a good day.